Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Today's demo is something that I did for a customer just as an example for um, them to learn how to use our TL50 Pro with IO-Link um, capability on it. So um, first things first is uh, if you're trying to do this with Crimson or uh, Redline HMI, um, there are certain parameters that you have to set that are not by default um, set on the TL50. So to access that type of process information, it's actually called acyclical information. So you have to write it through the, uh, the TBEN. Once you import that IODD file, which can be found on your banner, um, if you type in the part number on the search bar in the banner website, it'll take you straight to it. Uh, to the IODD file, you save that somewhere on your computer, import it into your IODD DTM configurator, and basically this enables for Pactware to be able to digest that file into a DTM file. So once you do that, you'll be able to open up um, Pactware and go from there. So once you open up Pactware, uh, it'll take a little while to open up uh, when you add a new IODD file. So just, I guess, be patient. And uh, But once it does open up, uh, look for your IOLink device and start your project tree on the left-hand side. I've done this a few times in some of my other videos, so you can reference as I'm going super fast here. I'm just trying to show you how it's done. Um, click on the search, the little eye icon and it'll search for your device automatically, add it to your project tree, and then connect everything. So just right click, connect, and once you connect, uh, I want you to do a topology scan, so Pactor will automatically scan your IO-Link block to see what device is on there and if it recognizes it with any of the IODD files that it has stored. So obviously here it picks it up, connect to the TL50 Pro, and click on parameters and that'll open up all of the features that you're able to access um, to set on your TL50. So for this example I did a two um, high and low level um, mode so what you'll need to do to be able to do this demo is set it to high and low thresholds and make sure you the mode selection is set to level mode. So those are the two most important um, pieces of information and then uh, you can actually set up whatever colors you want to be displayed as high and low if you want those to be different or if you want them to be flashing so in my example I used um, I used sky blue for the level you know within uh, the threshold and then for my high threshold I used uh, a red flashing and then for my low level I used a lime green or yellow green um, flashing as well. So once you set all of that, just um, underneath where it says TL50 Pro with that link, um, it's got to some green little triangles on here. You can write and read from and to the device, so make sure you write to device. Um, you can also do a lot of stuff here with the process data. Um, you can basically write or force um, you know, a level, if you type in 92, for example, that's out of the threshold range from 0 to 100. Um, if you go to 92, for example, it'll force your light to turn on all the way up to like the ninth segment. And then on your process data structure, you're also able to see how exactly the bits are broken, in, broken up into. So that'll help you figure out how you need to manipulate those bits in Crimson or whatever PLC you're using or HMI you're using to display this. So then once you have all of that set up, um, access your Turk service um, web server of the TBEN. So you access that by just going to your, your Google Chrome or whatever and uh, type in your IP address for that module. It'll pull up this web server, internal web server. The password to enter is literally the word password. Um, and once you go in here, go to your IOLink port 1 parameters and you have to change your your output data words to swap. 
So it's just kind of a little trick there. Um, Banner just structures their their bits differently. So for us to read them correctly and to write to them correctly, we have to make sure we do a swap. Um, also wanted to point out here, there's a Modbus um, memory map. So if you don't know where your your registers are, your holding registers, this is a really quick way to reference all of that. So it's an awesome tool that you hopefully can use for building your databases. So then, once you have your database built, um, just want to kind of walk you through how I did mine. It looks really cool, uh, better than on screen when you when you look at it on the actual um, HMI. I have a graphite seven inch, so it's kind of small here. But what I did is I obviously I set up my network. Um, I set the IP address of my TV and. And I do have this little cheat sheet that I use on Excel so I don't have to count up to <laughs> 16 um, just for just for reference and this is something that I that I reference all the time quick note um, between crimson and Turk we actually use uh, we're actually off by one uh, one word so when you're mapping add a one <laughs> to your holding register value that's that's on your Modbus map so if it's 2063 then we're actually talking about 2064 in crimson so um, just it happens between various manufacturers so here what I did and I'm not going to go over exactly how to do this bit masking and bit shifting because uh, my colleague Joe Wazoo has already done a video on this and it's awesome. I'll link it on the description box below. But if you want to learn how to do this, uh, just reference his videos. He go he breaks it down very, very well and feel free to reference that. So here basically I created my internal, uh, just an internal register. And here when I put it on my display page, I set it up as a data entry because I want to be able to put a percentage value from 0 to 100 and display that on my tower light you know and I want I wanted just to see um, I wanted a graphical view on the HMI with like for example a tank with some alarm saying hey the tank is leaking or the tank is level is too high it's gonna spill whatever and um, you know, I want to be able to display also that on my on my TL50 so I want to be able to write to it so my tag here my internal tag is set to be a data entry value so um, there's a little bit of stuff that you have to do with that. So once you set that up as a regular internal value and you drop it on your display page, um, if I were to double click on here so you can see there's a tab that says entry. If you click on that, there's an, there's an action that says on entry complete. What I want to do is I want to change those bits over to the left eight bits. The way Banner structured their bits uh, they're only using the, the first eight so I want to go over and use those first eight and um, I also want to be able to change it so after I shift them over I create another tag um, and then I form a bit mask and then I do an or statement that is linked to my actual output word which is 2064 I think so um, that's pretty much the basic logic here that I did to, to, to be able to do this demo. Um, it's very simple, cool graphics, if you have an HMI, um, it looks really nice on it. I also put an alarm viewer so you can see when the timestamp, when it, when it gets too high or too low. So thanks for watching, that's it, if you have any questions, comment below, let me know. Uh, if you want to see, if you want to have uh, access to the database or the packed word files, uh, let me know. Email me. All that stuff is on the description box below. Let me know. Cool. Have a great day.